the secret in their teeth. How DNA uncovered the diet of 19th century man-eating lions. Picture this. You're part of a bridge-building crew in Kenya in 1898, working along the Savo River. It's pitch dark, the camp is quiet, and suddenly two massive lions without manes silently creep in, raiding tents and snatching away workers. These lions, later dubbed the Savo man-eaters, weren't just your average big cats. They were the stuff of nightmares, killing at least 28 people over a few months. The terror only ended when Lieutenant Colonel John Henry Patterson, the project's civil engineer, took them down after a relentless hunt. But the lion's legacy didn't end when they were shot. Patterson eventually sold their remains to the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago in 1925. What started as a haunting tale of man versus beast has over time become an incredible story of science and discovery, showing just how much we can learn from the past with modern technology. Fast forward to today, and thanks to some amazing detective work using DNA analysis, we're learning more about what these fearsome lions were eating during their reign of terror. And it turns out humans weren't the only thing on the menu. A team of researchers from the Field Museum and the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign got curious about the lion's diet. They decided to take a closer look at their teeth where a fascinating clue was hidden. Thousands of tiny broken hairs wedged into the lion's damaged cavities. These weren't just ordinary hairs either. They told a grisly story about what these lions had been feasting on. This discovery kick-started a research project that spanned decades, leading to one of the most detailed looks at the diet of these famous predators. With modern techniques like microscopy and genomics, the team was able to unlock the secrets hidden in those hairs. By analysing the DNA, they could identify what species the lions had been munching on. The results were both fascinating and a little eerie. In addition to human DNA, they found the remains of giraffes, zebras, wildebeests, oryx and even fellow lions. One particularly cool thing about this study is the use of mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA. Unlike nuclear DNA, which you inherit from both parents, mtDNA comes only from your mother and can be used to trace lineage. This helped the researchers figure out that the two lions were actually siblings, which is something that had only been speculated before. Their mtDNA also linked them to populations in Kenya and Tanzania, confirming where these lions likely originated. The study didn't just focus on identifying the species in the lion's teeth, though. The researchers were able to learn a lot about the lion's behaviours and the environment they lived in. For example, the discovery of wildebeest DNA was surprising because the nearest wildebeest population at the time was about 50 miles away. However, historical records show that the lions had disappeared from the Savo region for six months potentially traveling to other areas before resuming their attacks on the bridge builders. It's possible that during their time away, the lions feasted on wildebeests before returning to their human prey. Another mystery the researchers uncovered was the lack of buffalo DNA. Today, lions in Savo are known for hunting buffalo as a favorite prey. However, only one buffalo hair was found in the study, and it was determined that a cattle disease called rinderpest, which devastated livestock and wildlife populations in the late 19th century, had likely wiped out much of the local buffalo population. With their usual prey gone, the lions had to find alternatives, and unfortunately for the workers, that included humans. What makes this study truly groundbreaking is the new techniques developed by the research team. For one, they managed to extract DNA from hairs that were more than 100 years old. The hairs were just fragments, often shorter than a pinky fingernail, but using mitochondrial DNA allowed them to work with these tiny samples and still get clear results. They also didn't need the hair follicle, which is the part that normally holds the most DNA. Instead, they focused on the hair shafts, showing that even these old, worn-down hairs could reveal a treasure trove of information. 
Another remarkable finding was that the lion's teeth had collected thousands of hairs over time which had become compacted in the cavities as the lion's teeth were worn down. The researchers believe this could help them track the lion's diet over time and potentially figure out when their man-eating habits started. Were they always man-eaters? Or did they turn to humans later on as their teeth deteriorated and their usual prey became harder to catch? The answer might be hidden in those embedded hairs. There's, there's also a human element to the story. While the researchers identified human DNA among the hairs, they're treating this part of the research with sensitivity as there could be descendants of the victims still living in the region today. They've committed to using ethical community-based methods to extend this research further, ensuring that they handle the human remains with respect. This study is a prime example of how cutting-edge science can breathe new life into historical mysteries. The researchers have opened up new ways of extracting DNA from museum specimens showing that even century-old artifacts can offer valuable insights into the past. And who knows, as they continue to analyze more hairs from the Tsavo lions, they might unlock even more secrets about these infamous man-eaters, giving us a clearer picture of how and why they became such legendary predators. In the end, this story is about more than just two lions terrorizing a camp in the 19th century. It's about the power of science to uncover hidden truths, solve mysteries, and deepen our understanding of the natural world, one hair at a time.